So by getting to know this super versatile little feature in 3.js, you can be creating all sorts of really useful effects like gunshot blast, footstep, all with relatively little work, which is cool. I like it when you get big rewards for little effort. So today we're going to be fiddling around with 3.js's decal system, and I'll walk you through how easy it is to set up and use. And the general idea is to have something that's almost like a directional light. So you have this 3D box that forms a directional volume, and that directional volume is projected onto the mesh that you want to apply the decal to. But instead of computing lighting values, like you would for a directional light, you're projecting this texture instead. And basically, what you'll do is you'll cut away any part of the mesh that isn't in the volume, keep any parts of the mesh that are inside of it, and clip any triangles that lie in the boundary of the volume. And lastly, you apply the texture by computing UV coordinates based on where those vertices are inside the volume, basically projecting those vertices into the projector space to get texture coordinates. And that's it. You end up with an easy and versatile technique to project decals. And you can throw whatever shader you want on them, and they look great. The API is really straightforward. You only need to do a couple things, and you have yourself a nice little decal. Let's take a look through the parameters that you need to set this up. So basically, you need to create a decal geometry. And that takes a few parameters. So the first parameter is mesh. This is the mesh that you're making the decal from. So essentially, what surface are you projecting your texture onto? Then you have your position parameter. And position is the position of your decal projector. Typically, you'd set this to the intersection point of your array cast in the mesh. Orientation is a little bit self-explanatory. It's the orientation of the decal projector. And you can use this to rotate your decals randomly. And finally, size. Again, self-explanatory. It's how big your decal projector is. Let me take a quick minute to point out that I've been working on a shader course for the past few months. So if you've ever wanted to learn shaders, starting small with colors and textures, and ramping up through a whole bunch of more advanced topics like lighting models, noise, sign distance functions, and more, and using all of that to build some cool projects like entire scenes made entirely in shaders, then check out this course. We're going to start by just reusing the first person camera code from our previous tutorial, and I'm quickly adding a spot where we can try out our new decals. So I'm adding this update decals function in the camera, and we'll fire this function off whenever someone clicks the mouse. So that's just checking the input for mouse presses. So if not this.input.current.left button and this.input.previous.left button. So the first part of this code, I need to create a raycaster. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm instantiating an instance of a three dot raycaster and we'll set that up from the camera and the mouse position. Now normally, you might want to see where in the screen the mouse is, but here we're just hard coding it to 0, 0 as the position, which is the dead center of the screen, since that's where our targeting reticule is. Then we do a call on raycaster.intersects objects and pass the this.scene objects. Now you could also pass scene.children to this, like they do in the example code, but this lets me very specifically control what objects we raycast against. And this list just happens to be just the walls and the block in the middle. And it'll never change. If there are no hits, return immediately. Then we instantiate a new decal geometry, and we'll pass in parameters like the mesh that we hit, the position of the decal, which is the intersection of the ray and the geometry. The rotation, we need to construct it out of the face as normal, because ideally, you probably want to apply the decal in the direction of the normal. So that's all I'm doing here, creating a quick look at to look directly down the normal at the face. Then we need to create a material, so I'm instantiating a dummy mesh standard material that's just set to white, and we should be good to go after that. Then we create the decal itself by creating a three dot mesh out of the geometry and material, so that's new three dot mesh, decal, and decal material. I'll set it to receive shadows because that looks better. And then we add it to the scene. Once we do that, we're all set. I'm here in my little world, and when I press the mouse button, bam, I get a decal. Although you're seeing a slight problem with this, in that the decal is kind of shimmering a little bit. There's a bit of Z fighting going on. Luckily, this has been solved before. 
Shadow maps typically suffer from this problem, and it's an easy fix. You can use something like polygon offset to create a variable depth offset for the faces. This is a really basic feature in OpenGL that has existed for ages. So we'll just make some small modifications to deco material and we'll add these new parameters. We've got polygon offset set to true. And then we'll set polygon offset factor and we'll set it to some value and we'll see how it goes. And once we're back in the demo, we can try applying a decal. So I click the mouse, we get a decal, and there's no Z fighting. So this is working. The last step here is that we can make this look a little better by adding a texture. And that's really simple. I'm sure if you've done 3.js before, you know to use a texture loader, load up a decal. I've drawn one already. And I'll add that to the mesh standard material as the map. We'll set this to transparent, and we're good to go. Now that we're back in the demo, I can walk around, and when I click the mouse button, we see a decal, and it looks great. I can walk around a bit more and pop off a few more, and you can see that I've added a bit of random rotation, so as I shoot them off, they kind of rotate randomly, so they're not all just facing the exact same direction. And I can get them on the walls and the floors. It works fine. Now, the technique isn't perfect especially when using it dynamically in a game situation, rather than having artists hand place decals. They look great when you're projecting somewhat parallel to the normal of the surface, like we're doing here. These all look good. But all it takes is you getting into a little bit of a funky spot. Like, let's say I project a decal right here, right on the corner of this cube, close to the edge of the object. So the intersection point will be the face facing me but it should wrap around. So the decal will have to wrap around the side, and what you end up with is this streaking, because this surface is parallel to the direction of the decal projection. So the texture is getting stretched out. And unfortunately, there's no easy solution here. Most of these solutions are probably gonna revolve around trying to hide the problem. You can try fading out the decal the further away it is from the contact point, or just limit the size of your decal so that these problems are hard to see. It's not an easy problem to solve. But anyway, this is a powerful little feature that, when integrated into your game, looks great and for relatively little work. Until next time, cheers.